Yeah, good good point. Uh, it, because it is vital. Once you realize what cancer is, the fact that it's it's simply a temporary malfunction in your body's cell division process, which is, you know, cell metabolism. Uh, every day we get cells dividing by the billions, and a few of them are cancer cells, and they get taken care of by the immune system and so on. But once we get cancer, we have to be careful that the diet we eat is supporting the physiology of our body and helping it to overcome the cancer. And what I've found is that there there are numerous nutrition and diet, dietitian books which are all very confusing, uh, very uh controversial in the sense that they don't agree with each other uh, within a, a certain book uh, there'll be contradictions uh, within the book itself I found after reading 18 or 20 of these books that uh, it's so confusing that I, there's none of them that I recommend to people uh, including one called the China study which I thought was a wonderfully scientific book until I realized that uh, the author, while they studied 10,000 Chinese for 10 years and they came up with conclusions that were were reasonably valid uh, scientifically, uh, they hadn't considered something called metabolic typing, which has also been called nutritional typing, which is a very important uh, factor here. But very quickly, what I fi finally decided to do for the people that I talk to about their cancer is give them a list of five no-nos that they can memorize, you know, put on the refrigerator if they need to, and every time they start to put something in their mouth, go through this list in their mind. Hopefully they'll have it memorized within a, a couple of days because it's a very simple list. Uh, Tess mentioned the first one, which is obviously sugar, uh, any kind of sugar. Uh, sweetener, except for a couple that are purely herbal and, and harmless, like stevia, for example, and agave, nectar, most of that is harmless. There are a couple of brands that are kind of suspicious. Uh, there's also something called xylitol now, which is a, uh, a chemically form formatted form of sugar, which is uh, harmless as far as we can tell. Xylitol is one of the exceptions. Forget about Splenda. Forget about uh, you know uh, all of the other little packets that are on the the restaurant table. They they are all very harmful. But sugar, in general, is in almost everything we eat. If you look at the ingredients of almost everything in the health in the in the supermarket, it will say high fructose corn syrup on the on the package, and that is about 20 times as harmful as just regular sugar uh, out of the sugar bowl. So you have to be extremely careful in what you eat. But sugar is number one. Processed food is number two on my list of five. And, of course, that takes away everything from the supermarket with the possible exception of the uh, vegetable and fruit section. Uh, so almost everything it becomes a no-no when you talk about processed food but it's very real because every form of processed food has chemicals in it and almost no nutrients and of course it is extremely harmful to eat things chemicals things like msg for example if you've studied that at all you know there are about 30 different names that they put on monosodium glutamate uh, they call it things like carrageenan and uh, vegetable, uh, hydrolyzed vegetable protein and uh, natural, natural flavorings. All of those words mean the same thing, which is MSG. It's a form of flavoring that the manufacturers use, which uh, allows them to use le less of the expensive form of the product. For example, in Campbell's soup, you know, a chicken soup, they can use, instead of uh, eight or ten chickens in a batch, they can use three or four and get the same effect if they add some MSG, which is very inexpensive. So that's why they use it, basically, to uh, enhance the flavor. But uh, it, is, it has been uh, 
proven to be one of the major causes of obesity in this country, in the United States, is MSG. They feed it to rats in the in the uh, lab, and the rats become obese. And that's the only difference in their diet from the other rats. They call them the MSG obese rats. So processed food is out, not, none, until, until you are completely cancer-free. And even then, I would say for a lifetime, that these first two are no-nos. You know, forget about sugar. Forget about uh, processed food. Reform your diet so that you eat things that are live, live food. All right, number three on the list is animal protein. Uh, everyone sort of balks at this. They say, you mean I can't eat fish or chicken or whatever. Actually, it, probably for most people, uh, with a few exceptions of people who are a protein type nutritionally, and require more protein. Uh, those that's a, a small percentage of people, and and there's a a discussion on one of my radio shows about a a, a way to test yourself simply uh, a nutritional test, which will tell you if you're a carb type or a protein type or a mix type or whatever. But except for those you know 15 or so percent who are a protein type. Most of us should avoid animal protein, particularly if you are sick, because your body spends about 60% of its energy digesting animal protein. And if there's anything you don't need when you have cancer, it's things that take energy away from, from, healing, from your body's healing process. And that's what eating animal protein does. Uh, on the other hand, raw vegetables, take almost no energy for the body to digest. They, uh, they pass through uh, the, the stomach and, and into the bloodstream and give you energy and lots of nutrients and lots of fiber. But animal protein is, uh, the American diet is way too high uh, in that. Number four is dairy. People wonder about this. Why dairy? Well, dairy requires an enzyme called lactase in order to digest it correctly. And the reason we all feel uncomfortable after we eat ice cream and drink milk and so on as adults is because we do not have any lactase in our bodies, like the little kids under five, most of them up to about the age of five, they have the, the enzyme to digest milk. After that, forget about it. Dairy is impossible for adults to digest properly. And that's why it gives you so much gas and makes you feel poorly after you've eaten, drunk some dairy or eaten some ice cream or whatever. So avoid dairy entirely, even if it's from the cow next door, uh, raw milk, forget about it. It's, uh, it's just not good for you, too hard to digest, and nobody needs it as an adult. And number five on my list is gluten. Gluten is simply what is harmful uh, in wheat products. Uh, like bread, cereal, pasta, for example. There's a, an interesting uh, acronym which you might want to jot down. It's, it's the, the word BROWS, B-R-O-W-S. And I learned this from a, a naturopath doctor, a very competent lady about uh, six months ago, and it's a very helpful uh, acronym because the five letters pertain to grains which contain gluten. And gluten is the, the culprit here because people are allergic to it. About 30% of the population are allergic to gluten and don't realize it. So they eat this stuff, bread, cereal, pasta, whatever, and they feel rotten and they don't know why. And usually the allergic reaction occurs several hours after you eat the gluten. So People don't realize how good they'd feel if they just cut this stuff out of their diet. So what does browse mean? Well, B-R-O-W-S, jot these letters down. B is for barley. And this is, by the way, the barley wheat uh, f portion of the barley, not the, the leaves, the young leaves that are used to uh, put into barley products, which are very, very health healthy, by the way, and which... Uh, give you a huge dose of alkalinity and lots of other help. But the barley grain 
is uh, ha- contains gluten and is therefore something I would avoid if I had cancer. The R is for rye. The O is for oats, of course, so oatmeal is out. The W is for wheat, which is in almost all uh, bread, cereal, pasta products. And the S is for spelt, S-P-E-L-T. Some of you may have thought that spelt was a, a harmful and, and, and uh, you know, health food store product. In fact, it contains gluten and probably should be avoided just like the other four. So that's the, the five no-nos, sugar, processed food, animal protein, dairy, and gluten.